हेलो एवरी वन माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर तुषार गुजरात ही फ्रॉम मैकेनिकल डिपार्टमेंट एस एंड डी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग येवला टूडे विल स्टडी द ट्रांजेंट एंड स्टडी स्टेट रिस्पॉन्स एनालिसिस सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ इट सो वॉट इज सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टीम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हेव टू अंडरस्टैंड सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टीम सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टीम्स एक्जिबिट अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिस विच मस्ट बी एनालाइज एंड डिस्क्राइब तो सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम एक्जिबिट्स वाइड रेंज ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिस मीन्स आउटपुट वेरीज कंटिन्युअसली ओके वेर एज फॉर अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सिस्टम वेरिंग अ सिंगल पैरामीटर चेंजेस द स्पीड ऑफ द रिस्पॉन्स चेंजेस इन द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम कैन चेंज द फॉर्म ऑफ द रिस्पॉन्स सो लेट्स सी द एग्जाम्पल अ सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम कैन डिस्प्ले कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स मच लाइक अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सिस्टम और डिपेंडिंग ऑन कंपोन वैल्यूज डिस्प्ले डैम और प्योर ऑसोलेशन फॉर इट्स ट्रांजेंट रिस्पॉन्स so in short i will tell you what happens in second order system so the output or whatever the response is there it varies continuously okay it may be in the form of pure oscillations or it may be with some damping okay so that response is called as transient response because the response varies continuously with respect to time okay that's why second order system has a wide range of responses so you understand first statement second order system exhibit a wide range of responses which must be analyzed and described so these responses must be analyzed and described so a general second order system is characterized as by following transfer function so this is the transfer function numerator and denominator numerator has b and denominator has s square plus as plus b okay so this system is or this transfer function is in the form of Yes domain. Okay, it is in the form of yes. G of yes is equal to b of one. Yes square plus as plus b. So it is in the form of yes. Okay. So it is called as yes plane or yes domain analysis. So we can derive the above transfer function in the following form. Closed loop transfer function also. So g of yes is equal to omega n square divided by yes square plus twice zeta omega n into yes plus omega n square. So here what is omega n? Omega n is natural frequency of the system. And zeta is damping factor of the system. So omega n square divided by s square plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n square. This is the transfer function for closed loop system. A system suppose this is the spring which has spring also, one damper is also, and it is attached with mass. Okay. So such a system is called as damping system. So like this transfer function we get. Now. If omega n is equal to under root of b, okay, then it is referred as the undamped natural frequency of the second order system. Undamped natural frequency of the second order system, which is frequency of oscillation of the system without damping. So there is no damping at the time. You should understand omega n is equal to under root of b, and zeta is equal to a upon two root b. Okay, so this referred as damping ratio of the second order system, which is a measure of the degree of resistance to change in the system output. so it is damping damping provides degree of resistance to change in the system output so it resist for changes in the output okay so this zeta is equal to a upon 2 root b is called as damping ratio and omega n is equal to root of b so you can refer first diagram also so here check here b is equal to omega n square okay that's why omega n is equal to root of b and here constant a is equal to 2 times zeta into omega n okay So that's why omega n is equal to two times zeta upon a. Okay, and the output is zeta is equal to a upon two times under root of b. So now poles, poles are complex if zeta is less than my one. Okay, so poles are represented as minus omega n zeta plus omega n under root of zeta square minus one, and minus omega n zeta minus omega n under root of zeta square minus one. So like this. the poles of the second order system can be mentioned so when we get poles do you know how poles are calculated so if denominator term is equal to 0 at the time we get roots of that denominator equation that is called as poles of the system so here this denominator part if you equal to that 0 if if it is equal to 0 and if we solve this equation then we will get two roots okay s1 and s2 so these roots are nothing but poles of the system so same same we will get poles of the system okay so you understand both the formulas undamped natural frequency is under root of b 
डैम्पिंग रेशो इज ए अपॉन टू रूट बी सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द वैल्यू ऑफ जिटा अ सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम कैन बी सेट इन टू वन ऑफ द फोर कैटेगरीज ओवर डैम्प्ड वेन द सिस्टम हैज टू रियल डिस्टिंग पोल्स ओके सो वेन जिटा इज ग्रेटर दैन वन एक्चुअली वेन जिटा इज ग्रेटर दैन वन एट द टाइम सिस्टम इज ओवर डैम्प्ड एंड वी गेट टू रियल डिस्टिंग पोल्स वट इज अंडर डैम्प्ड वेन द सिस्टम हैज टू कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेटेड पोल्स बिटवीन जीरो एंड वन इफ जिटा वेरीज फ्रॉम जीरो टू वन we get two complex conjugate poles at the time system is under damped when the system has two imaginary poles at when zeta is equal to 0 then it is called as undamped and when the system has two real but equal poles when zeta is equal to 1 then it is critically damped system so like this you should understand these four categories over damped when zeta is greater than 1 under damped when it is less than 1 but between 0 undamped means 0 and critical damps means zeta is 1 okay this you understand now time domain specifications given that the closed loop transfer function t of s is equal to c of s upon r of s is equal to omega n square divided by s square plus twice zeta omega n into s plus omega n square so this is one transfer function is given okay this is one of the transfer function the system second order system is parameterized by zeta and omega n there are two only parameters zeta and omega n for zeta varying from 0 to 1 and omega n greater than 0 we like to investigate the response due to a unit step input suppose unit step input is given as a input and what will be output so output response consists of one is transient response and one is steady state response so there are two types of responses are there one is transient and one is steady state response so transient part is shown below with the help of bracket okay A steady state response is the steady state part. So here in the graph, this variation is called as transient response, and after that we get straight line that is called as steady state response. Okay, so like this time domain specifications are there. Now for transient response we have four specifications. One is rise time, one is peak time, one is percentage maximum overshoot, and one is settling time. Okay, so formulas are given here. Rise time. Rise time is pi minus theta divided by omega n into under root of one minus zeta square. So these formulas you have to remember actually. So this is rise time, pi minus theta divided by under omega n into under root of one minus zeta square. Peak time, what is peak time? Pi upon omega n under root of one minus zeta square. So it is called as peak time. What is percentage maximum overshoot? It is given by this formula. E raised to pi zeta divided by under root of one minus zeta square into hundred percent. And settling time, four upon zeta omega n. This is settling time, okay. And steady state response, we get steady state error directly. So these are few transient responses that I have shown here. In order to understand these definitions properly, you can see my previous videos also transient response specifications. So now you understand these formulas and note down these formulas in your notebook. because these formulas are required while solving the problems now question is here how are the performance related to zeta and omega n now here given a step input that is r of s is equal to 1 upon s so this is one step input then the system output is the transfer function is given omega n square divided by s into s square plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n square so this is the output of the system now here suppose we are taking inverse laplace transform we have the step response c of t is equal to 1 minus 1 upon under root of 1 minus zeta square e raised to minus zeta omega nt into bracket sin so this is laplace transform inverse laplace transform and where theta is equal to tan inverse under root of 1 minus zeta square upon zeta or theta is equal to cos inverse of zeta now the same thing is shown over here the poles we get okay after making the denominator as a zero the poles are plotted here this is one pole this is another pole okay and theta is angle between them so this is imaginary axis this is real axis theta formula is given here okay so like this we can plot into s plane mapping the poles into s plane here it is shown So we get two poles, S1 and S2. When we equate this equation equal to zero, 
let us rewrite the equation for c of t let beta is equal to under root of 1 minus zeta square and omega d is equal to omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square so omega d is here damp natural frequency so omega n is greater than omega d thus c of t is equal to 1 minus 1 upon beta e raised to minus zeta omega n t sin of omega d d plus theta where theta is equal to cos inverse of zeta so like this we get formulas as we go on solving so rise time what is rise time time the response takes to rise from 0 to 100 percent from 0 to 100 percent if response takes some time then it is called as rise time and the formula is shown here with pink color tr is equal to pi minus theta divided by omega n and root of 1 minus zeta square okay so this is the formula what is peak time definition is given the peak time is the time required for the response to reach its first peak which is given by so time required to reach up to first peak okay that is called as peak time so the formula of peak time is given here tp is equal to pi upon omega d so here omega d is equal to damping frequency so pi upon omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square this is the formula over here now next transient response analysis third definition percentage overshoot what is definition the percentage overshoot is defined as the amount that the waveform at the peak time overshoots the steady state value which is expressed as percentage of over steady state value so when we get maximum peak okay so this maximum peak is called as percentage overshoot okay at the peak time the maximum peak that we get that is called as peak time overshoot okay so its formula is given percentage mp is equal to c of tp minus c of infinity upon c of infinity 100 percent okay so like this formula is given and also one more formula is given c max minus c final divided by c final into 100 so this is also formula so there is one solution is given and after solution you will get this formula in the pink box percentage mp is equal to e raised to minus pi zeta divided by under root of 1 minus zeta square into 100 percent this formula consists of minus sign this you remember you have to write down all these formulas properly next is settling time what is definition of settling time the settling time is the time required for the amplitude of the sinusoid to decay to 2 percent of the steady state value so there is error is considered as plus or minus 2 percent and the time required for the amplitude of the sinusoidal wave form to decay up to 2 percent of steady state value that is called as settling time so ts is equal to 4 upon zeta omega n this is the formula for settling time in the ping box so now we'll try to understand example for under damp system find the natural frequency and damping ratio for the system with transfer function so g of s is equal to 36 divided by s square plus 4.2 s plus 36 now this is the transfer function is given over here okay and we have to find out natural frequency and damping ratio so what is first step compare with general transfer function so general transfer function is like this omega n square divided by s square plus twice zeta omega n s plus omega n square so this transfer function you should remember always general transfer function is very important now you compare both the equations okay what you will get numerator part you compare omega n square equal to 36 that's why omega n is equal to 6 and twice zeta omega n is equal to 4.2 that's why zeta is equal to 0.35 so you will get zeta is equal to 0.35 next example given the transfer function g of s is equal to 100 divided by s square plus 15 s plus 100 okay so find ts percentage os and tp so here now you again compare the equations so numerator part gives us omega n is equal to 10 and denominator part gives us zeta is equal to 0.75 now both the values we have to put in formulas just we have seen formulas and we get the answer something like this ts is equal to 0.533 second percentage os is equal to 2.838 percentage and tp is equal to 0.475 seconds so like this we will get answers now under damp system second order response specifications so these are response specifications that we'll see, we have seen already so this is called as os maximum overshoot okay percentage os is written here so this entire part is called as settling time 
now here this part is called as rise time and this much part is called as peak time okay and here plus or minus 2 percentage is steady state value or steady state error <coughs> like this under damp system it's there now over damp system okay so here what we have shown one transfer function is shown g of s is equal to b upon s square plus s plus b okay so input is again step response 1 upon s so our final transfer function is c of s is equal to 9 divided by s into s square plus 9s plus 9 so multiply these two we get this transfer function okay and if you solve this again you will get something like this now s is equal to 0 first s is equal to 0 in diameter second s gives us value as minus 7.854 and third s gives us value as minus 1.146 now here we get two real poles okay there is no imaginary part only we get poles and those are real poles okay and here zeta is greater than 1 that's why it is called as over damped system So now over damp response you can write like this also if you want to write c of t is equal to k1 will be constant plus k2 into e raised to minus 7.854 t plus k3 into e raised to minus 1.146 t so whatever roots that we got that roots we have to write in this equation so this is our second root and this is third root that we have written over here and this response is called as over damp response now under damp response okay again here the system is same type of system transfer function is given and it is multiplied by 1 upon s so here if you solve this we get two complex poles if you make denominator as equal to 0 and if you find out the roots then you will get this type of complex poles first pole will be 0 s is equal to 0 but second two poles s is equal to minus 1.5 plus or minus j 2.598 like this you will get two complex poles okay and such a equations are written in the form of like this this is the equation of output k1 plus e raised to minus 1.5 t into bracket k2 into cos of 2.598 t plus k3 into sin of 2.598 t so all these things are covered in your mathematics subject in the part of differential equations so where you find roots of the equation and you try to represent them in the form of equations okay so like this it is under damp response where zeta is in between 0 and 1 so here value of zeta is in between 0 and 1 so under damp response is something like this you see the graph you get one or two peaks and the system gets stable okay and poles are poles are plotted over here okay this is one pole this is another pole okay so like this you can indicate in yes plane this is called as under damped response now undamped response now we are going to see undamped response okay so here the equation is like this 9 upon s square plus 9 and multiplied by 1 upon s as an input so we get answer as poles if you solve the equation denominator equation we get s is equal to 0 first pole will be 0 but second pole we get s is equal to plus or minus j3 that is we get two imaginary poles okay because as you know that s square is equal to minus 10 we get okay suppose s square plus 9 is equal to 0 denominator if we are equating to 0 okay we will get s square is equal to minus 9 okay so their roots are plus or minus 3j okay like this because minus part is there so minus part gives us imaginary roots okay that's why we get here plus or minus j3 to imaginary poles and these are written in the form of equation as k1 plus k2 cos of 3t okay here zeta is equal to 0 this is called as undamped response so when it is undamped response at the time we get continuously varying output signal like this okay there is continuous variation 
and poles are mounted over here. This is called as undamped response. And now last one is critically damped system. So what happens in critical damped system? We get two real and equal poles. They are exactly real parts and they are equal also. So that if you solve this equation, we will get output as S is equal to minus 3 and minus 3. Like this two poles we get. And therefore our equation will be K1 plus K2 e raised to minus 3T plus K3 into T raised to T into e raised to minus 3T. You understand that here T is multiplied, okay? T into e raised to minus 3T. So like this we get critically damped system. So the zeta is equal to 1 over here. So critically damped system has poles on the same location and it will give you the damping properly. Critically damped the response is something like this, okay? Now this is the proper second order response. So output is shown on y axis and time is shown on x axis. So, so undamped system, first of all you see undamped system means what? You will get the vibration or magnitude continuous oscillations. You will get continuous oscillations for undamped system. Okay, this you understand. Then under damp system for under damp system you will get one or two peaks and system will get stable this is under damp system for critically damp system critically damp system system will get stable very easily okay this is critically damp system and for over damp system it will also get easily stable okay so like this second order system responses are present so here some systems and their pole zero plots are shown and responses are shown okay so i think this is taken from same examples we have seen now okay so this is summary of all examples we have seen so effect of different damping ratios what happens if you increase damping ratio okay what will happen the damp uh, the number of oscillations gets reduced so as you go on increasing zeta value of zeta okay what will happen the oscillations are decreased you see the lower curve like the lower curve having zeta equal to 2 its oscillations are less but the top curve having zeta equal to 0.1 its oscillations are more so like this there is effect of damping so here question is shown describe the nature of second order system response via the value of the damping ratio for the system with transfer function so this you try at your home and you try to plot the second order response okay for the following systems so you can do them as your own revision so thank you so much all of you for watching this video in this video we understood concept of second order system and transient response specifications